This Christmas is just like any other, with a few suspect dodgy companies selling knockoffs, scams and fake products all over the internet in the hopes to catch a few people out. So what exactly happens this year when you order a Nintendo Switch for £30 from China? So this right here in a very beaten up package is my Nintendo Switch. Or should I say Ningrento Switch or Swatch or whatever they decide to call it in the listing, they alternate between the two, which I ordered off eBay a few weeks ago now, as it was one of the more convincing scams out there. Now remember, these scams, they're not preying on people like you or me, they're preying on older people who may misread these listings or be fooled by images alongside it. They don't know what a Nintendo Switch is, but when it shows Mario running around on a Switch-like device, well, it makes sense. Interestingly enough, the screen cap they've used in this scam is actually taken out of the Sun newspaper. While we actually get this all unboxed here, I will genuinely have to share with you some of my favourite highlights from the listing. Right, so I've just pulled up the product description in front of me, and it is apparently a Ningrento Switch 4.3 inch 4K HD, 4K HD apparently, HD screen video game console handheld portable. That's a catchy name. Featuring the 4K HD 720p screen, making for ultra-portable illity. That's not a word. And you can commit to carrying the strong weather. The anti-skid design, so no skidding here, prevents the hands of slipping during fierce battles. And the start button has been upgraded. There's a lot of nonsense like this. Apparently it's got ARM power. And game archive support make loading fast always. Multimedia support make family photo showing available to you and family. Download, play, and family. I think this might have been written by Vin Diesel. The specifications also include that it's a swatch, a swatch mini, of the product color, color, and a load of other nonsense here. Apparently it only weighs 150 grams, which I can believe by the weight of the box. And due to different monitor and light levels, the actual color of item might be slightly different from the color showed in the pictures. Please allow one to two centimeters measuring deviation due to manual measurement. Okay. Okay, that's a bit strange. And apparently it also includes our switch, a data cable, two speakers, and our instructions. I'm curious to know what speakers means though. So two speakers, maybe like extra speakers, like a gift. They always love to throw in things like that. But anyway, back to the video. However, inside this heavily beaten up package is a threatening welcome note direct from the seller. That's the top thing in the box. Apparently from Super Family Fun 1895, and I've actually got it in front of me right now, and it reads, Hello customer, many thank yous for your purchases from Super Family Fun 1895 on eBay UK. We promised the guaranteed best product for you and your order of Ningrento Switch HD Pro Model from our eBay store. This product is of 5 star 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 rating, so please do give us 5 star 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 rating for up to 10% off your next eBay purchase with us. They've also managed to use the old 90s eBay logo and a clip art star. And the next bit, I think this is a threat, says, We have Super Family Fun 1895. Fun never stop. Ever. Anyway, that's brilliant. There is also another grey package included with what seems to be our Nintendo Switch. So let's throw this all to one side and find out exactly what we really got sent. Inside the box we have the actual Switch itself, contained in a box that can't seem to make up its mind what company they're intending to rip off. Game Player is a clear ripoff of the Nintendo logo with that sort of circle shape containing it, and the product is shown with both black and blue colours, the blue apparently being a new one, possibly a reference to the Switch Lite I think it's called. They've also got the Realtek Player logo, I haven't used the Realtek Player since I had a Pentium M powered laptop, but what's actually inside the box? Inside the box, there's not a great deal, pretty much only what they promised in the listing. The console itself, which actually looks really sleek, a pair of earphones, which I'm guessing is what the listing referred to as speakers, so possibly a translation error, as well as a charging cable and a manual stating game. So clearly very, very important stuff in here. All that's really left to do is stick this on charge and wait. While we do wait though, I do want to touch on a few things, namely the manual, as I have no idea how well this thing is going to work, and the manual did set me off with a worrying undertone. Actually telling you how to commit piracy in a manual? Well, that's a lot less than legal. 
especially for something apparently family friendly, which I can assure you, this device is not. I will touch on it later on in the video, there's an entire segment on it. Question is though, what actually is this device like to use? While unfortunately I was a tad ill when I recorded this live usage segment, as this was recorded a few days before this main voiceover, so I'm going to play that now, so you guys can find out alongside me just how good is this sketchy Nintendo Switch knockoff scam thing. Hello and welcome to the actual live usage segment on this very strange and quite dodgy Nintendo Switch from China. By this point in the video, I'd imagine that I've covered most things on the device in terms of where it came from, how sketchy it is, and even how dodgy the manual is. But we haven't actually seen how good it is yet, because the worst bit is, it's actually a surprisingly competent bit of kit, and I've had a little bit of a mess around with it, and I'm going to have to try and avoid the bits on it that are slightly creepy and unconventional and controversial. But pretty much, the dashboard is laid out a bit like a... Um, a PlayStation Vita almost, with this almost bubble-like design. At first it's almost quite confusing, because you think like the Vita, you can just go ahead and tap things. But it's got dashboard of ROMs that have been set here, I don't know if you can change these at all. And then you've got a few more. Most of the time they've got odd names like Fat Fury 2, no idea what that is, but that is certainly something. And if you actually want to access what's actually on here, you go up to games. Now, while that loads, because it takes a few seconds, I'm going to have a sip of tea, because sore throat and all that. But anyway, either way, you've got Super Famicom, which is SNES, Mega Drive, which is the Mega Drive, the NES, MAME, Game Boy Advance, and Game Boy Color. And these are all emulated, so it's actually a surprisingly competent device in terms of emulation, because you've got a broad array of emulators actually on here, and a lot of ROMs. There's a uh, SD card in here actually located on the bottom, and that actually contains about 7.5 gigabytes of ROMs, and these are not exactly, you know, very space-heavy consoles. None of these are. I think out of all of them, the Game Boy Advance and probably the SNES actually have the biggest files. So there is a, ri a, ri a wide array of games actually on here. The problem is, most of them are either dodgy knockoffs or have the wrong name. So for example, Doom here, I got quite excited about this because I think there is a Mega Drive port of Doom. And it takes you to a load screen, you select a load, get the uh, Sega logo. I'll turn the volume down a little bit as the volume is a little bit garish in terms of emulation quality, but the actual emulation quality is pretty decent. So this is Corporation by Sega. And there's not really much to say about it other than the fact it's not Doom. I'm guessing it's been called Doom because it is one of these corridor shooters almost. But as you can see, it's nearly full speed emulation. Actually, this is quite good. Don't actually know how to play this game. Oh! By the way, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a unique one. Then you've got these triggers on the side. See, right does nothing, but left actually takes you back to the menu where you can save a state, or you can load your progress. Well, game guide. I think you can actually set a game guide if you set this all up properly. I'm not too sure how to do that. And I know for a fact the menu doesn't mention how it mostly touches on how to uh, commit piracy. Either way, though, it gives you an idea of what's actually on here. If I actually go to NES and say try and find... I'm not going to try and find Mario because there's a lot of controversial ROMs on here. Uh, I'm not even going to touch on some of them. I will touch on the controversy on on this device, of course, but they are less than stellar. For example, though, if we take a look at, I don't know, Castlevania 3? I think Castlevania 3 is an actual NES game. It seems a lot of uh, thought has been put into the NES section of most things on here. Possibly, actually, the real Castlevania. Oddly enough, it actually does uh, NES sound emulation quite nicely too. It's not great because it's only got one speaker on the back, so I will turn it down a little bit. Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse, 1990. That is surprisingly impressive. Go ahead without entering a name. There you go. That's a proper NES game running on a less than stellar device with really decent sound emulation. That's what I mean, this device is so close to being actually impressive, but it isn't. 
for reasons I'll touch on later on. It's actually almost a good buy. Right, so if we actually take another little look through things, we'll actually try out this uh, save state emulation. So I've saved a state here for Super Mario World 2. What actual settings do we get? Sound output. You can turn off sound output to improve emulation. Keyboard mapping. You can change your keyboard mapping. Screen size, full screen or original. We'll go for the original size. Information. Interesting. You actually have emulator options. I did not expect that, but let's try and save this state. We should be midway through dying. Oh, wow. Original size is very literally the original resolution. Let's try and keep the same aspect ratio. Can we have we got an option for that? See, I mean, it's actually got quite a few options, right? If we scale, that way you don't have to deal with like a 320 by 240 image. We're not trying to play GTA on a Pentium 4. Uh, and we'll try and load that save state again. And that way we should get a nice 4x3. Yeah, we got a 4x3 aspect ratio. Slightly over that because this is a Game Boy Advance game. It's actually okay. I mean, the emulation is... I think it's running at near full speed with possibly a few hacks. And the audio is definitely suffering because of that. Yeah, I don't actually know what version of Mario this is. This is very confusing. Right. It's actually quite responsive to play, though. I'm pleasantly surprised. Wow. It's very responsive, though, and the actual buttons are quite nice. It's not like the other clones you use, where you end up with, uh, you know, like that PXP, where it's all mushy. These are actually quite pleasant to use. Until you fall off something. Right, let's get back to the main menu again. Wipe that off. Let's actually try something... Uh, so we established Game Boy Advance emulation works, which is one of the more intensive ones. Sometimes it does crash back to the game menu. Let's try something from the SNES, shall we? I'm a bit scared what we're going to find, because I've not looked through the SNES games. I know the NES ones were controversial enough. But hopefully we don't come across anything too, too bad. We have Super Mario RPG. That's, that's quite well known, actually. I've never played it myself, actually. But the fact you actually get um, the ROMs for these... Quite well known Nintendo games. In this case, actually looks to be a legitimate release. 1996. This is one of the more intensive ones from what I remember because 96. That's fairly into N64 territory. That's quite a late SNES. Oh, yeah. Performance was suffering there a tad. If you can see the screen quality, the actual quality is um, quite nice. I'm curious how the game's going to run. It's not looking like full speed. Oh, that is not looking like full speed at all. Oh no, that's bad. I have things it calms down a little bit. After it's gone through a few of the effects, let's just put A. Turn that volume down a bit more because that emulation quality for audio is not great. It's those fade transitions it's suffering with. So I'm wondering if it's got speed up hacks running that it just can't deal with that. I'm assuming it's running some sort of either proprietary operating system or most likely Android with ripped off emulators. But if they are home developed, as in in-house development, it's quite impressive to see SNES hardware running on a 28 pound console, especially considering those are basic 3D effects it's running. It's just the um, transitions suffering with. Everything other than transitions seems to be running at full speed. See, the slowdown is there when it's fading in. I'm actually quite impressed, actually. This isn't, I wouldn't thought, think of all things this would be playable. Because I know that this is actually hard, quite a hard game to emulate. Come on, let's... Let's just see how well it runs. See if there's anything more intensive. Because I'm assuming that explains how they got the performance. There's a lot of speed hacks in the background. Seems decently responsive enough. I'm just messing around here. And that's actually quite smooth. It's not great, but, oh, no, there is sound. Yeah, I am wrong. When there's more than one entity on screen, that little CPU is struggling, I reckon. So whatever hacks they're using are not enough for something like this. By the way, let's just have one last little look, see what else. We'll try out some MAME, shall we? Because we've, and a MAME doesn't often tend well, actually, MAME can actually be quite intensive, but the thing is, I'm not exactly much of a uh, MAME expert. 
I know quite a decent chunk about the uh, well, the Nintendo consoles, the Mega Drive, etc. But uh, not a great deal about MAMES, so we'll just go for a random one. Slam Mast.zip. I'll take a sip of tea while it loads. I'll be curious, because I know MAME emulation is apparently quite intensive. This game uh, is for use in all countries, excluding the United States. Is that Hulk Hogan? I am not complaining in the slightest. Oh, there we go. Let's go with a single match. Where's that um, Hulk Hogan looking fella? Is that him? I'm assuming that's the Hulk Hogan looking fella. Right, main emulation. Actually running far better than SNES, and this has got quite a lot of graphical effects. I'm assuming those are meant to be there. I'm assuming that's meant to be a light show. The question is, is it responsive? Yeah, it is. I don't think it's running at 60 FPS, but I don't think this is a 60 FPS title. I'm assuming it's probably about 30. No, this is this is really well done. It's actually quite surprising. These buttons are fake for anyone wondering. The uh, plus and minus, they are not real. But I know people love to see a bit of live use to see just what it is like when you actually hold it in your hands and try and use it, but actually really nice. Oh, am I getting beaten up? Yep, yeah, I was. But yeah, that is the um, actual gameplay experience. It's just about now that I probably touch on why I can't show you absolutely everything on this device. Well, that certainly gives you an idea on what this device is like to use. And the buttons are quite responsive and nice. The actual screen offers scaling and multiple modes, as well as multiple brightness levels. And in fact, it's genuinely quite surprising how good this device is. It does seem like most of the emulation is using a lot of speed hacks. So it wouldn't exactly say it's accurate, but even then, with the speed hacks, it's not enough in some of the more intensive games, suffering especially with transparency and fading effects on the later releases, especially for the SNES and Game Boy Advance games. Which was already intensive on the original hardware, so for something that costs under 30 quid, maybe I can let it slide, given how well it runs the vast majority of titles. Of which I did manage to do some extremely basic performance tests on. But before we get into any of that, I do want to touch on something very, very important. The controversial parts that make this product and any praise I give it completely redundant. See, this console comes with 274 Game Boy Advance titles, 352 Game Boy Color games, 116 MAME titles, 460 Mega Drive titles, 2,898 NES titles, and 171 SNES titles. However, when shifting through these clearly pirated and dodgy ROM hacks, a vast majority are not acceptable in the world today, nor would they have been okay for release on their target consoles. Many are either extremely racist, creepy, perverse, and many, many more equally awful things on a device marketed clearly towards kids and family fun. I can't actually show any of these on video, nor can I discuss them in great depth. Nor do I actually want to. Out of the most bizarre that I can actually touch on, it would have to be something like Super Cigarette Brothers, which is included on the device. It's a Mario reskin where you play as a cigarette fighting against ashtrays. Sounds hilarious, which albeit dated, you know, it's still quite a comical ROM hack. However, that was one of the very light-hearted game reskins compared to the hundreds of ROM hacks included on this device that are far worse. There seems to be thousands of these consoles sold, and it's not appropriate, it's not okay, there is nothing that makes this even remotely acceptable, regardless of where you are in the world. So I just hope none of these make it to an unsuspecting family for Christmas. Anyway, enough on that rather quite serious topic, and we'll go back to the usual budget builds benchmark style positivity and cosy review of this frankly scam and quite scummy device at this point. Now, with that quite serious tangent out of the way, I did manage to get some performance testing done. This time with my own selection of ROMs that I put onto this device via the included microSD card. 
Performance in most titles from Mega Drive through to even the SNES and Game Boy Advance, to my surprise, actually ran really well. Sound emulation was off, and there was a performance increase should you turn off sound emulation, and there were some graphical inconsistencies due to the bodged approach and lack of accuracy. But remember, we're talking about a sub-30 quid device here, we're not talking about a modern computer trying to run these games with accuracy, we're talking about a cheap handheld from China. Games felt very responsive, as previously touched upon, and the screen and device ergonomics, they're pretty decent thanks to being a blatant rip of the real Nintendo Switch Lite, something not to this thing's detriment. Compatibility though was pretty hit and miss. The vast majority of the games will work and will run, but they might run poorly due to effects that aren't actually going to run at full speed. Any of the later Game Boy Advance Pokemon games won't work for some reason, nor will many games with larger ROM sizes and oddly enough Mega Drive titles required to have their names shortened and file extensions changed, as well as a few other oddities. So we've established performance and gameplays alright, but that wasn't the end of what this thing offers. This thing can actually decode 720p HD videos fine with no issues whatsoever. I ran the latest Budget Builds episode through Handbrake and stuck it on the device in 720p HD, and it ran really nicely. It does also come with its own preloaded videos, but oddly enough the Chinese have decided to ship to children all around the world a Christmas toy that comes loaded with a window advert from 10 years ago. That's not Windows, the computer operating system, that's legitimately a glass window advert from 10 years ago. That is the genuine date on the file, I did some digging, and it is from 2011. It also plays music pretty well, albeit the included speaker quality is reminiscent to my GCSE product design thing I made, which was never that great sounding, and the controls for most of the audio stuff and video players are so bloody wonky you will constantly change to one of the creepy included things on here. For music it's a few creepy copyrighted songs that come preloaded, and on top of this it does have a calculator which works, although has a few spelling mistakes and actually runs quite slow, and I see very little reason to use it, but it's on there. The settings on the device are also not very comprehensive, but does let you change a few things, so you can tinker around with things like the device name, and you can, you know, just mess about with it. Then finally, out of all its features, I accidentally used one. I accidentally used the audio recorder without realising it, it just shows how awful these applications are. As in, they do work, and they do work actually quite fine, but the controls are damn near terrible. But in terms of actual usage, this thing has a semi-decent microphone, so enjoy this clip of me accidentally using it. Wow. Yes, it will be. I'm actually just testing the microphone now. I'm wondering how good it sounds. I bet it sounds really, really good. Really good quality. So with all the features and gameplay and testing out of the way, that brings us near the end of our video, where we have the teardown and build quality and all that, which was very literally a teardown in this case, as the screws turned to seemingly butter. Even with the right size screwdriver, they just stripped completely. Eventually I just sort of gave up and after much discussion in the Discord, in other words, a few messages, I decided the best thing was to let Curiosity get the better of us, and the rear cover was sort of ripped off. Kind of showing the great quality plastic here, given that the plastic just ripped around the screwdriver. Either way, you can see the rather basic internals now, the speaker wiring was held weakly on with a minimal amount of solder, and the battery lies completely exposed, meaning if this device was to get crashed... Speaks for itself, really, and my personal favourite, is that the processor, that's right, the processor and VRAM actually use a thermal pad to connect to the screen. So they're using the screen as a heatsink. Truly a fascinating cost-cutting measure. But talking about that processor, what exactly is it? With just the model numbers and a lot of research on the internet, it seems that this uses a processor SOC solution that was originally from a partnership to develop basic robots. That seemed to have fallen through, so all of these chips just got discarded. This has been combined with 512 megabytes of GDDR3 based VRAM included on the board for a tad more graphical acceleration. This in turn means, and this is quite a serious thing here, is that this has been completely developed in-house. I thought it was going to be ARM powered and just stolen emulators, but no. This has all been custom developed to run on a waste processor discarded about 7 or 8 years ago and once again showing that a scam product 
has actually had a degree of thought put into its development. It can decode HD video, and it can actually pull off some intensive emulation with playable results. It's just a shame that it's all gone to waste to try and trick people into thinking they're buying a Switch, when in reality, they're buying a hunk of junk that is really a competent device completely wasted. So in conclusion, this was one of the most fascinating scam products I've tested out in a long time. All custom, right down to the software and hardware, provided we ignore the name and also the design. But it's actually a shame because the content it ships with is not in any way acceptable. Ergonomically it's light and responsive, the screen is visible even in bright daylight, and it's just a shame. They've resorted to scamming people and including sketchy content rather than actually marketing this as a genuine emulation device. It's actually quite a good standalone emulator. No, it's not accurate. No, it's not 100% compatible. But yes, it bloody works. And yes, it's actually a semi-competent media playback device. It's ideal for kids. I was genuinely impressed. But now, it's a real shame that I feel repulsed praising this product given the actual crap content I had to shift through to make for this review. It's almost anger inducing because the actual content on here is disgusting. The device itself is fascinating. So it's been a bit of a weird one to make this review and it's a shame that I can't really touch on it more than what I've said. But I hope you've all enjoyed watching, I hope everyone has a good Christmas as this was sort of the Christmas special, even if it was a bit anger inducing and strange, I did have some fun making it other than those few little bits where I got a little bit angry. But other than that, thank you very much for watching and good night.